Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. This is Will. This is Alex. Welcome back to another episode of They Mostly Come Out at Night. Mostly. Wow. Been gone for a while, but... We have been gone for a while. We did a live stream. We did do that, so that is... Again, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube... It's on there. Now's the time to do it, because uh, it's, it's on there. You can watch... As much as you want of the six hours of us just playing bullshit, but uh, yeah, it's on there. And so, also, on that note, don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen to us. Yes. We're, Sp- we're anywhere from Spotify to Amazon to Podbean. So our home is Podbean, um, but we're on everything. Our RSS feed is just seeding all over the so, place. So give us a like. So give us a like. Give, give us, us a, a sub- listen. Give us a subscribe. Yeah anywhere and also we have a subreddit in case that's your thing yes that Just... is our new thing we have a subreddit um we have an instagram that isn't very popular i mean you can find us anywhere we can find literally we are on every social media and we're almost on every single podcast site but just go known, on reddit no look up to they anyone. mostly come out at night podcast or team cone yep. you'll find us but wherever you listen to us give us a follow and we appreciate it yeah, we really do. And uh, listen, if we can make this a full-fledged thing, you will help make that happen by uh, Every day. giving us more listens and more, you know, just of everything. So that would be awesome. And we love doing this, and we love providing entertainment for you. And, yeah. So In the if- words of Bill Lumberg from Office Space, yeah, that would be great. Help us help you, okay? <laughs> you know, you want more Team Cone content, you got to you got to give back, okay? Let's uh let's start this shit though. It's been a while. Let's just start <laughs> another episode. Well, we I I did make this a little special cuz we did pick up quite a few listens in Australia. We did. And this movie was planned in the future, but we are on 82. Yep. And this is an 82 film. So I decided that it, you know what, 170, let's do Next of Kin. Yeah, and uh, I had never seen this movie. I know you had. Um, I have seen this. Um, This is, I think, this is not, like, well-known at all, but I know, like, this is, like, apparently one of Tarantino's favorite horror movies. It's actually really well done. I was really legitimately surprised from not, like, hearing about it, how I haven't heard about it. I've heard someone explain. I've heard someone describe it as like an Australian version of like The Shining. In a way, like visually I can, and I, like I can see that because like the visuals are very close to that, but it has that. like some severe, like heavy, like paranoia horror going on, which I really enjoyed. And an ending that is uh, woo. <laughs> yeah, the ending is wild, <laughs> wild. Like I. I mean, there's like there's the slow burn going on, which I'm I'm I mean, I'm a fan of slow burn though. I, am, I, I mean, love I, I love I love a good slow burn. Um, build when, up and then at the end. When I watched recently was a uh, House of the Devil. Yeah, man, that is like nothing happens for the first like forty minutes and then everything happens, and I love that about slow. And burns. with this, like little things happen. It's only ninety minutes, so it's, it, a, it's, it's short and sweet, which is great. Yeah, like, um, it's over before you even... Now, the review, I mean, for how much I liked it, I'm not... Like, the review's not going to be, like, super long, because there's not, like, a ton. It's it's kind of a, you know, just a basic paranoia horror. Like, something yeah. something extraordinary happens to, like, someone, and then... It's like a haunted house story. Yeah, exactly. But you'll see. And lots of, like, little details that kind of give it away after, like, after you, it reveals who, like, the little mystery the person is you're just like oh shit okay i sh- i should have caught that one holy crap how did i not know that was going on <laughs> um but yeah let's get into it so this is going to be our critique of so of the movie first things first the first thing you see in the movie with like the opening credits and everything is the fucking lit synth score um which i fucking immediately i'm like okay oh okay. shit And then there's, like, an immediate, like, crane. It's, like, a crane shot of, like, a car. Yeah. And then it's just, like, 
you know, you, this, you introduce this character. Because the, one of the first things that happens is you get, like, a voiceover, and it's, like, a will. Like, yes. I bequeath my estate. So, an aunt, basically, the main woman's aunt is giving her... Her mom. Is there a mom? Yeah. The aunt. It's later. Oh. Sorry. Her mom is giving her... I thought... Okay. Oh, no. The aunt is the one that wrote the... Yeah. Okay. So, sorry. My bad. So, her mom is giving her... The aunt's her, the... <laughs> yeah. So, her mom is giving her this estate, but it's an old... Like, an old folks home. It's a, it's a retirement home in it's a retirement the middle of nowhere. Home, uh, on the middle of Australia. And um, she just uh, happens upon it, so she's going to go there... And I guess she kind of grew up there. She grew up too. in the area. Yeah. So she knows kind of what's going on, but she doesn't really know exactly how to take care of the patients and doesn't know exactly what she's doing. Well, it's all – I mean, it's very innocent because, she, you know, she goes to like this like – it's like a roadside diner thing. Yeah. With like arcade games and stuff and like everyone well, like – there's like, a little kid that's just constantly playing pinball. And like the, the owner no re- recognizes her and he's like, oh, how have you been and all this stuff. Yeah. And like it's kind of like a town. It I guess it's kind of setting up like it's a town where like everyone knows everyone. Yeah, it's super small. Yeah, but you get a little thing it's in the beginning community. where she's stacking forks. Yeah, meticulously, which we'll play later. Um, well, but, like the kid tries to knock it down and everything, and, and like puts solid. a spoon on top yeah. of it, and it's solid. So she knows. You'll see. It, it's a it little plays, thing. It, yeah, it, it's it comes thing. into effect later. But it's like, a thing, and it works. It, it works great because it's kind of foreshadowing, but you don't exactly know it's foreshadowing. It's just a little quirk Yeah. until not. But she goes to, like, this place, and it's like this – it's it's like a giant estate. Well, and she has kind of instructed them because she just got this estate. She instructed them not to bring in any new patients before she – not in patients – any more like retirees before she like kind of like gets to know a bunch of the people and, well like, that and like get, get a handle on it because yeah. one of the things is that she talks about how like th- they're not making money but there's like an on-site nurse there um and like they're not making money and she like i guess do they talk about like problems like paying the staff or whatever no not really staff but just like the fact that like they're not bringing in any money and like the fact that it's like she inherits it and it's already in the red well because you know even the nurse says like we can use more patients we need the money and she's yeah. like well like you i know, can't like i can't i don't know what i'm doing yet. right but yeah like and it's just like her getting set up and then immediately a person shows up yes up, so up. there's this like elderly woman that's getting transported there it's the new the new retiree yeah and her son um, is bringing her there and like you know they they get there and like a, a lightning like a huge like rainstorm and yeah. a lightning like strikes the um the, a branch and they get trapped and he has to like carry her in to the retirement oh. yeah he carries her in and like you know like the, the the door is locked and like they bring her in and she's that's where she's like why is it like why is there a new patient and she also little by little starts she sees that like her mom kept diaries yes of every year and like she just picks up the first one and it's from like 1950 and it talks about her and her sister yes and how her rita when her parents like died they gave them the house this is this is like a and, thing that's been in the family for ages and the mom want the mom and sister agreed to turn it into a retirement home yeah to make extra money and it's been in the family for ages. Yes. But that's simple. And then, I mean, it's classic haunted house things where... Yeah, just creepy shit starts to happen. Like left the night. and right. Um, there's, like, pretty quickly... I mean, this is, like, super quick, but she gets, like... It's, like, the next day, and she goes to um, town to hang out with, like... it's He's kind of like her boyfriend. His name is Barney, and uh, he kind of just is, like, the entertainment. Yeah. Um, you know, because she, like... They go swimming. Yeah. And in the meantime... There's an older man getting ready for... A bath. A bath, and there's, like... He has the bath on super hot, because there's a bunch it's of steaming. steaming. Yeah. 
and you know everyone else is having breakfast and then you know one of the women is like well where's this guy and he's like oh well like he waits till the end because he the... thinks he's going to get better service yeah, exactly even though the food is cold um because Quirks. everyone has left the dining yeah. area so this old guy like you know gets ready and like starts to get in the bath and like accidentally steps on a body in the bathtub and, and the like next is shot is like a slow mo of like them pulling the body. It's it's the really cre- it's really creepy. There's cause a like, lot like because they like they, they tilt up and it uh, it almost makes it look like the body's like moving by itself at first. Because for a while because you don't, you don't pulling, see the limbs. They're pulling yeah. his arms, but like you don't see them pulling the arms. So it just but looks it's just like, like these eyes open. He's like rising yeah. from the bathtub, which is it actually looks really like it's <laughs> it's a pretty creepy shot. Like you know, a lot of people talk about like. Like, there's a lot of movies, especially recently, where they use slow-mo, and it yeah. comes off as lame. This is not that movie. No, I, you know, I didn't know, because at the beginning of the film, there is a slow-mo scene. It kind of, like, is a foretelling of what the events to happen, because it's all, her all distraught. With yeah, like, and you see it you later. Know, like, yeah, you see her in like, real time. covered in blood and stuff. But, like, she, it's slow-mo, and I didn't understand, like, what was going on. But that's the whole point, right? But then every... they already want to start it as like what the fuck? Like, Disorienting. How, how did she get to this point? Disorienting. Because they start it at the end, basically. Yeah. And, but yeah, there's a lot of slow mo in this movie, and it it's it's effective. Cool. It is cool. Uh, it's not one of those like gimmicky slow mo. No, it because it's for effect. It is. It has a great effect, and well, I like it because it's like it's how slow mo should be used. You know, like this is how movies should use slow-mo how movies should con- look to convey horrific events or a mood a mood yeah you want to convey a mood with slow-mo you don't want to just use it because you think it looks cool all the time exactly but, and in the meantime like also like before this like the main character keeps having like nightmares and it's like her as a little girl, and she's like playing like a with red... this like red ball because when she first gets there, she's looking around. And she does go up to, into the attic, and there's the, the red, red ball, but it's like all everything. dirty. And and one of the windows is she open. looks like the window, yep, and sees a figure, yep, watching her. Hmm. Um. But yeah, she and she keeps having this nightmare about her with like this red ball, and like she goes into like the bathroom, and there's a bathtub, and you don't really like. You hear someone calling her name. Well, because the curtain is also drawn on the bathtub. So but it's like no each time she has a nightmare, on. it like goes a little further. Yeah. Until you see what what's actually happening. Right. But she's like having fun with this guy. There's a part where they're like running around in the woods, and she sees another figure. They're like they're almost playing like hide and seek, and she's like yelling his name, and then she she stands be- next to a tree, and you just see like this figure standing behind like two trees yeah, and she thinks it's barney but then he like and then he like spooks her and then he goes in the off of she's like i saw someone and he's like okay i'll check and then he like jokes around that he got stabbed and he's like no there's nothing there yeah there's nothing there and she so comes back and she that's, like, that's when they he, tell her he drives her back and he's gonna he says there's a party that night and that there she's she, invited she's invited um and so he doesn't tell her that like another friend is driving him, I guess. Cause yeah. she, she just immediately assumes it's because he wants a lift to the yeah. party. Cause he lost his license. <laughs> exactly. Cause he can't drive. Um, so she goes back and she's like kind of in the middle of all this chaos because they found a dead body. She was, pl- yeah, she's planning to go to the party and yep. they spring this on her and that the guy who found the body had a stroke because which, of the finding. Of the and body. it's like a patient that she's, she, she's like, like out of all the, people there he's one of the only ones that's like nice and like cordial she's with closest her. to yeah. him yeah because she knows him yeah and yeah he f- he has a stroke because he's so horrified by this so of course like she tells barney like i i'm you know, tired. i'm exhausted and he's even like okay well that's okay i got carol to take me and then the carol picks him up and she's like oh we can fit you in and it's like a little two-seater well yeah and like she's you like, assume yeah, that fine. she's just saying like we can fit you in the trunk and like <laughs> You know, she clearly just wants to go with Barney. And yeah. She's like, no, it's a fine. I'm exhausted anyway. And then she she's at home, and she's looking over, like, it's like an accounting sheet of, like, all the expenses. And she keeps seeing her, what she thinks is her dead aunt, her name. Yes. So our Rita, Bar- Rita. 
Yeah. And um, I think also before this, we're introduced to like a doctor. Yes. And, he... and again, the doctor, he's a doctor who delivered her, our main character, and he's... Well, and he helps out the patients when they need it. And, and he has kind of a thing going on with um with Connie, the nurse. Yeah. who's like the her main like the, like, in, the in-house nurse or yeah. whatever. Um, because you can she like sneaks in on them like and he's like touching her hair. He's like they're all doing that thing where they're like fixing their hair yeah. and like like he, she obviously walked in on and something. then she's like okay have fun right um but th- th- she's like looking over all this and she sees like all these expenses for something yes with the name of the aunt and then the lights go out and you get like you also get some great animal cinematography because there's like a shot following a cat yeah so this cat um goes into like this room where it's supposed to be the dead body yep and it sits there and you see the sheets like moving already like it's breathing sums up and so she's like resting and like she wakes up and the lights go out yeah and uh, she goes to look for the cat. So she looks for a flashlight, and she, like, you know, it's a jump scare, so they pull out, like, a doll. It's a, it's a doll. It's not really a jump scare. They don't do any, like, loud noises, but the doll is not. Well, it's creepy. It's I mean, a creepy doll. It's, like, ineffective jump scare because you're not expecting it. Well, that and, of course, they get a doll that's creepy. It's fucking creepy. <laughs> so she finally finds the flashlight, looks around for the, the, ki- the, the cat. The cat. And this actually, like, legitimately freaked me out Well, because she goes into the room and she's well it's just like because again it's the it's total darkness yeah the cinematography the only light is from her flashlight so it's like you're just as blind as she is and then she goes into a room and it's like the dead guy because it's the drape the body with a sheet over it Mm -hmm. and then she looks over and like the torso is uncovered and his head is just staring at her staring directly at her when, when in the scene they made it a point to have the nurse he closed she, his she eyes like, yeah. closed his eyes when they first found him yeah so you know sums up and she uh and then she gets spooked by like one of the you know residents like what's going on like the lights went out and she's like it's fine so she covers the guy back up and then goes down to like where the switch box is mm-hmm. and just like starts the breaker again and fixes it and then goes upstairs and the ca- and like the a phone's ca- ringing the phone's ringing but like she also notices the candle is lit it's great in her, in her room because well, she's like talking on the phone with barney and then she just like looks off camera at something and then like walks up and you see a candle and they don't tell you anything well I but mean, in your head you can assume because it was like pitch black and if she had a candle why was she looking for a flashlight so, because someone else turned on a fucking candle. Highly sus. And, but they don't even draw attention to it. It's like, it's great because it's subtle. Right. And she's talking with Barney and he's like, he's in a pay, he's in a phone booth. And he's like, yeah, like I got bored at the party. I just wanted to call you and I want to see you. And then like, there's like, every time you see him, there's like a truck in the background coming closer and closer. And then eventually it's like almost right next to him and he's like kind of like, struggling to hear and then when she's like stay on the line but he can't hear it and she's just like talking to him and then you hear a like breathing and a meow and she just immediately like what the hell she's like barney stay on the line but he doesn't hear it because of the truck and so she goes down to like sneak a peek to see where like where the other phone is but there's no one on the other line there's no one on the other line and she finds the cat in a like a closed room yeah and it's Hmm. something's going on some shit is going down suspicious but yeah she uh and then she goes and, and then she goes like she's going she goes to sleep and she you get a... like a quick it's kind of like a double whammy because as she's in the room you see like remember the door like jiggles yeah like someone jiggles the door but then the window opens up and you get a figure, you like, get a walking bamboozle. Up, yeah, walking <laughs> close to it. And I'm like, it's probably fucking Barney. It's Barney. It is Barney. It is Barney. Like, she turns on the light, and it's Barney. And he, like, kind of, like, freaks her out at first. But then they have a good time, if you know what I mean. They have a good time, and she can finally sleep. Yep, she can finally see. Because before this, she had that, that nightmare with her and the ball and the ba- bathtub again. But don't worry, the nightmare is just beginning. Oh. Because this is where shit gets, like, 
kind of more creep. Well, it's like the next. Well, it's like the next day, and um, Barney's gone, and she sees like Carol's car. Oh, th- this is this is a good a good scare. I'm not gonna lie. This is still like great because they don't even tell you what the hell the deal is. Oh, they don't. They don't shed a single because clue. yeah, she's like staring out the window, and it's Carol's like two seater sports car with the like top down with the top down, and there's like someone just like. I don't know how to explain it, but it's like if you've seen Jake, like if you've seen Jacob's Ladder, it's like an unnatural like where like someone's neck is twisted all the way around and they're like staring up, and it's just like the whole like you see it and you're just like. Uh, well, I like it because it's like unnatural, right? Yeah, it's like it's one of those things where it's like it doesn't quite look like right, in your head, you know. But it's far yeah. enough away that you're like you don't know if you're just seeing things or if it's like. If it's like actual, like something horrific, yeah. But then the car just drives away. Yeah, it goes. It it just drives off, and so immediately, like, but in your head, you're like, that's sums... like that. Their their head is not supposed to do that. Sums up there. Yeah. Yep. And um, she goes. And she, there's a part where she goes to the um, she goes to talk to the doctor. Yep. And talks. Oh, because she goes to the um, the old man who had the stroke. Yes. And she asks him about, like, do you remember Rita and all this? Like, what? Ha- and do you remember, like, her? And then he, like, kind of says. She, she didn't die is what he says. He's talking, like, because of his stroke, he's talking very, like, quietly. And he's, like, not dead. So she goes down to the doctor and she kind of inquires about it and he's like like, no she did die here he's just crazy one he also told her that the patient that died in the bathtub had like a heart condition yeah and that like he you'll find out because it's like bad heart yeah yeah. like that was like a he had like a heart attack basically yeah that's a key point of information because later on you see you'll figure out something um but yeah and he tells her oh yeah no rita's dead yeah um but he gives her a little extra thing where he says, like, she didn't die at the home. Um, like, your mom couldn't handle, like, her health declining. So she took her to another home. So she sent her away to another home. And yes. so that's, like, supposed to explain why there's money going to some unknown source. Right. And. So then the the woman starts reading a bunch of diaries. Well, there's a scene really quick where she goes to talk to um, Barney. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. I forgot and about that. to tell him about Carol. Yeah. And then he's like calling her at the um it's like the cafe thing. And he's like, Yeah, no one's answering. I don't know. And then he tells her, Well, there's like a... like I know you're worried, but there's like a f- like a thing with all the firemen or whatever. Yeah. There's a meeting. Like there's gonna be there's gonna be alcohol. You can come. Yeah. And yeah, but yeah, she goes home and starts reading all of the diaries. Well it's a great shot too, because she like starts with one and she's Well on it, the it does this thing where it's like they have like a dolly around the bed and it's like going from left to right as she's reading through all the notes and the notes keep getting more like paranoid and it keeps going left to right, left to right until there's like a pile of <laughs> well basically the the uh diaries are claiming that the certain patients died in certain ways but the doctor wrote in different because you'll see later like she goes to the doctor's like where he where all where he keeps all the patient records. Yeah, the, where all the patient records are, and she's, like, matching them up to, like, what it says to what it actually was. Right. So and in the diary, see, it claims they died a certain way, but the doctor wrote it off as something else. Something else, yeah. And, but in, like, the diary, the mom keeps talking about, like, th- there's well, an evil presence. Then she also claimed that, like, the aunt was having, like, mental issues or whatever. Like Yeah, there's a lot. like... There's a lot of stuff about, like, the aunt going crazy, and that's why she had to put her in a home, and, like, all this other and stuff. And then, like, little by little, she's like, I found, like, so-and-so dead in the bathtub. Yep. And then it's the next day, this person's dead, and, like, there's an evil. Yeah. There's some evil physical presence in this house. So. So the the girl, woman sneaks into the, so the doctor and, like, the nurse go to check on some of the patients, and she sneaks into the doctor's office. And she finds his death and reports. And finds all the death reports, and not, they are falsified. They're not matching up. They're not matching up, and she even looks at the guy who had the heart condition. Well, because well, like, she, she sneaks around, and, like, the doctor and the nurse are, like, walking past, and the nurse is like, 
well, she, does she, doesn't she know that you lied? Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah. And then she goes up to like the guy who died in the bathtub and looks at him. And she he sees has, like, he's got like bru- bruises on his shoulder. Not only does he have like, it's like if you like pressed really hard on someone's skin, it's like a finger bruise. Like someone basically held him under. But the water. he also has like a scratch. Yeah. And then, you know, the doctor comes in and she's like, "What? You told me he dra- Like he told me he died of a heart attack. What's he this?" He has like bruises and stuff. And then he tells her, "No, like that. That's from when they lifted his body up. Mm-hmm. It's no big deal." And she's like, "You're lying. Like, yeah, you're full of shit." Yeah. So and she's she- like, the paranoia starts going real. Haywire she just runs him. out of the house yep. and runs to like the town where they're having this meeting. She like freaks out. Barney like is like okay like calm she has down. like a like, full that's... blown panic attack in the middle of the meeting. Yeah, my favorite little detail though is that they're all having this like meeting about fire safety or whatever. And they're all drinking and 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 Barney's just in the corner like asleep. I'm like good good one and and then she like gets him and she has a full blown panic attack and he just like we're gonna have. It's fine. Like we'll go. Let's on a go walk. back. Like you know, and he like eventually talks her into going back because he's going to confront the doctor. And he's like, "We'll get the like I'll get his like files. It's fine. Yeah. We'll like we'll prove this is all right. I believe you. Like let's go. Yeah. And, and so they go back to the house, and he goes in the house, and she's, she's like, like she's waiting outside because she doesn't want to go inside. She's like, Can I stay here? And he's like, Yeah, it's fine. No big deal. And she's standing next to a fountain. This, Art. Art. This, oh, dude, this Art. scene is so um, well done. Because Art. The fountain is just like pouring water. Well, you see right? a fountain and it's like it's framed to where it's like her in in the in the background and in the front is like the water from this fountain. And, and then it like close-ups on the fountain and, and the, the water turns and the water red. turns into blood. And then she sees it. And walks up to it, and you see, like, a person with their throat slit. Well, also, like, yeah, it's, it's the nurse. Yeah. With her throat slit, and, like, the the fountain is just overflowing with blood at this yeah. point. Yeah. It's great. And then she runs in the house, and, like, you know, the phone's dead. Everything's gone. And then she just, uh... Oh, There's, like, nice. a sliding door, and, and it, it just like, slides, slides by itself. And she's like, what? And then, like, out of it, you just see fucking Barney in a wheelchair. And you think he's, like, maybe playing a prank again because, you know, Barney's a prankster. But, no, his dead body just comes flying at her at full speed, lifts off the chair, and lands on her. In slow-mo. All in slow-mo. And she screams. Fantastic. So she goes. We uh, get this awesome, just insane, like like shot like speeding through this like hallway and you see like the old man like standing in the doorway and then like it catches up to him and like she's there and she gets him out of there so well, she, she 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 props like a chair against the door and immediately someone's like banging on the door mm-hmm. so she tells the old man to go out the back like the fire escape basically and then she and grabs then a key locks that door and runs to another door and locks it again and and then we get well she so looks around there, there was another scene where she looks up like when a, the sprinkler was like hitting her she's car. driving back to the and she sees someone in her mom's like old coat it's a red coat it's like a bright red coat it's very recognizable so what does she see now she turns around and sees an old woman wearing the coat just sitting in the dark and like slowly turns around and she's like who is it and it's the old woman that they brought in in the, the very the, beginning the new the new uh retiree the new patient and person. so she, she like goes over and she's like she's like this was my house i own this house your and mom was the insane one she takes off her wig and it's the aunt and she's just, just like, like holy shit well you get this great part where she like hugs her and the main character is just like having a fucking mental break and she's like it's my house and like they thought i was crazy but i'm not she was the crazy one and you see she's, like, rubbing her hair, and her hand's, like, covered in blood. And then she unlocks. She's like, it's okay, and she unlocks the door. And then, of course, the door opens, and it's the driver from the beginning. The, the son. The son. And, um, and he, like, comes in with a hammer and starts, like, slamming it all over the place. And starts attacking her and, like, gets on top of her, and she 
kicks him in the <laughs> kicks him in the nuts, and then like slams a, like a it's like a stool bathroom. on top of her. Oh yeah, and she fucking gives on him top, the chair. Yeah, fucking like <laughs> slams a stool on top of him, and then he runs into the bathroom and locks it. And then, at, I don't. I think I, I don't remember at what scene is they, this the when she sees the doctor in the. Bathroom? Oh yeah, this is it. No, I'm trying to remember what scene it was. It was some point before this when, like, you saw, like, what her nightmare was about. Oh, yeah. She throws a ball. She threw the ball into, like, a bathtub. And then you see what's in the bathtub. And the bathtub, like, moves away, and it's a drowned man. So yeah. she's, she saw what her mom saw. She saw, like, what was happening, and, like, yeah. this has been, like, in her. Right. She's just been repressing it. Yeah. And so she looks over, and she sees the doctor with, like, a needle in his arm. His arm is held up high, and it's, like, slit. There's a there's the creepy doll yeah. hanging off in the corner. And then there's another dead body. I think it's, like, one of the other patients. And they're, like, in the bathtub with him. And it's just covered in blood. It's and, pretty creepy imagery. But my favorite thing – well, not my favorite thing. My favorite thing is later. But one of my favorite fucking things is when the ass just, like, I see you. And then, like – And then you see, like – she like looks down at the keyhole. And you see like you see the her eye. In it's the so it's so well done. Because so she because she like looks in the mirror and she sees a reflection. Then just like a quick shot of the keyhole. So she sees a little hair pick, and you you know oh, exactly man. what's going to happen because she sees this little. It's like a hair comb with like a little needle that you pick your hair with. Yeah, and you're like, you immediately know, you know what she's going to do. She's gonna do. So she takes it and like she uncovers the keyhole and you still see the eye in there. So she just takes it and fucking like stabs the keyhole and, and then you... brings it out in slow mo with like blood dripping mm -hmm. and then opens it and like the ant just like keels over and then you get this insane slow mo. It like it's like a overhead shot in the mansion of her. It's like a tracking shot of her running down the fucking hallway. It's really cool with like this like animal screaming yeah it's then, really disorienting it's and like great. it's really great because like it totally conveys the whole mood of the entire oh, scene great. and she gets like her... how much of a panic she's yeah. in how like scared she is about everything and then she gets in her like her car and drives away and drives down to the the gas station it's the yeah like station. the the diner thing where the kid is and everything. She sees the lights on in there. Because first she goes to like where they were having the fireman meeting. And there's no one there. There's no one there. So she goes there and then knocks on the door. The kid's there just playing with the pinball machine. You have no idea where the dad is. You assume he got like drunk somewhere. And the, he just leaves the kid to play. But the kid like unlocks the door and lets her in. She like moves the arcade cabinet in front of the door. And then she's so like, no hey, does, does your dad like, does he have a gun? Like. And get, she's get like it. looking for change and she tries to use the public telephone. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And so she's just sitting with the kid. He's... And the ki <laughs> My favorite is like It just cuts to Well, it, it, first it you see them like sitting there and then she's just like looking at the door and the kid's like Well, you want you want a burger? Yeah. Candy bar? Ice cream? Like he just keeps like sugar well, i love how it shows it shows the kid like in full ar army this is later gear. well because first it like you see them there and then it like it zooms in on the tv which has like some sort of dance competition on yeah and then it cuts and the kid is just sitting there I'm trying to show like time passage with I'm the guessing. gun yeah time passing with the gun like, and like, like a army shotgun gear. he has a full helmet and like army gear on and then you see her stacking sugar cubes yep and it's like it's like a pyramid and, and it's, like, perfectly balanced, and, and it's then, not moving at all. And then there's – she puts three down, and then, like, it gets slower, and then she puts down two, and the kid moves the last, like, bowl of sugar cubes. She grabs the last one. The last one, puts it at the top of the pyramid. Like, drops it on – because, like, she even – like, they even make it a point to make her drop it. Yeah. Like, from, like, kind of a height. A little distance, to, yeah. To make sure that you know this thing is, like, structurally sound. Because you made the thing at the beginning. Yeah. That, like, he couldn't knock over. He couldn't knock over. So she, you shouldn't be able to knock over the sugar thing with, like, just a basic movement, right? Well, anyway, she drops the last thing. And, like, literally, like, milliseconds later, it just crumbles in slow-mo. And then the coolest fucking slow-mo shit. 
the fucking van that the sun drives just rams through the fucking gas station at full fucking speed. And and in the middle of this, you just see a close-up of the kid. Oh, shit. (laughs) Yep. Oh, I think it's funny because I even said, oh, shit. And then the kid's like, oh, shit. So the kid gets under the table and starts loading the shotgun. And then he shoots it a few times. And, like, misses every time. And the guy's, like, he's, like, starting up the van and getting closer well, and One, he's, like, he also busts out the windshield because they like, all shattered. Yeah. And so, like, to see, he busts them out more. And he, like, st- like zooms closer and closer to them. And then The eventually... kid's, like, yelling the main character's name. And then she just grabs the shotgun, walks directly to the car, <sighs> cocks the shotgun, point blank range, just blasts his fucking head off. You see for like a split second his this is head the, explode. This is like one of the best quick cuts I've ever seen because it it, it gets the message across, but it doesn't you like can't, it just leaves it all up to your imagination. You don't even get to you, process You can't it. even barely comprehend what happened. Yeah. But just like uh, in a millisecond you just see his head gone and like <laughs> it's so perfect. It's, it's great. just a hard cut. And so they're running away because, like, when the kid was blasting, he blasted the gas, like, the gas tank. And there's, like, a... And there's, like, a live wire um, hanging down. And so then they're outside, and it's the thing you saw at the beginning of the movie with her looking all distressed next to a car. And then you hear an explosion, and then she gets in, and they drive away with the kid, and you get this awesome, like... I love how they drive past a fire danger well, sign. I I love the way they film this because it's, like... You see, like, the two of them, and then the camera moves over to the fire danger sign, and it says hi. It's, like, all the way to the fucking red. And then the camera goes, does a full 180. And you just see this gigantic fucking petrol station and explosion. You see, and then you see the explosion keep going off, and then the credits roll. Dude, it's fucking amazing. This, this is, movie, like, this, this is genuinely rocks. good. This it's, is a, gen- it's a good horror no, film. No, this, the, rocks. This movie fucking rocks. I'm not, yeah. I would legitimately buy this movie. I'm probably going to. I'm probably going to. I Just think. Just because it's, it's, it's really well done. If I have to import this from Australia, I will because this is. I think you can buy it on streaming. I'm not 100% sure, but. I know you, you can you, rent it on streaming. I'm assuming since you can rent it, you can buy it. I would I assume. Know. I would assume. As long as it's in HD. But, no, this movie rocks. Like This movie is so well done. I The scenes are great. I just fucking love. I love all the little touches. Like, yeah. I, I love the granny who gets, like, there's, like, a day when they're getting their mail. And she gets, like, a fucking, uh, like, a Walkman. Yeah. And then the next, and she's like, what the hell is this? What am I going to do with this? And then they're going on, like, a field trip. And she's, like, wearing the Walkman and music is just blaring. And she's like, what? What? Like, well, I, I can't hear what you're hearing saying. Like, I, I love the little... There's so many little touches mm-hmm. that I just love. Oh, it's great! And so well done. Like it's got that slow burn, but but it's like I mean the thing about slow burns is that like you can you can take that too far. Yes, and it can be too slow. But this like it's 90 minutes, and even like before you get to that insane ending, there's lots of there's lots of creepy stuff. Yeah, like all the little things of like. Where she sees the person well, so out at night. She sees the the figure in red. She sees the man in the forest. Like it's she sees all... Carol in that weird position in her car. There's little. There's things. There's just little subtle things that they go on that like just like, and you can see that it's like they're doing the same thing. They're basically doing the same thing to her that they did to the mom. Yes. They 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 drove the mom insane, and now they're doing the same exact thing to her. Mm-hmm. And it's they basically it's fantastic. Like it, it kind of like just says they gas they gaslighted the mom. Yeah, and now they're gaslighting the daughter. They're gaslighting her into thinking that she's crazy. Yes, but she she knows, mm-hmm. and I she figures it out. I love this. I love this movie. Like it's I love great. I love the characters. I love the mystery. And I'm sorry, like... And the horror scenes are so solid. They're oh, like great. They're some of the best the I've seen. Even in, like, mainstream movies, they're some of the best I've seen yeah. in a, quite a while. The cinematography is... 
That scene where Barney comes flying it's at her so in the wheelchair great. is so well done. Because it's like you could have – they could have filmed that in the most basic way possible. Well, I'm also a huge fan of like no build-up scares. Oh, yeah. Like no – like just all out of nowhere. Well, there's no music. Just like, it's well, just – there's barely any music in the whole movie, which I think, Honestly. to its credit, is really well done. It's just sound effects. I do like how they do that. Yeah. And a lot of the like music in the slow-mo scenes is just like animalistic or like oh, weird great. like audio noises. Or the fuck, I mean, the ending doesn't even have music. It's literally just the sound of the car crashing, mm-hmm. and it's, it's, it's amazing. It kicks ass. This movie kicks ass. It's like, a great horror film. If you are a fan of any horror, or like especially a paranoia horror, or if you like kind of just like well done, like balls to the wall horror, this is like a really good slow burn movie. Yeah, like I mean, if you want to see a movie that just goes hard on like visuals and the mystery and like I don't know, like I'm not joking. I'm not even kidding. Every aspect of this movie is good. Rocks. I can't, I can't really critique any of it because I didn't really hate anything. Like in the I movie. love the characters, the, the acting story makes complete sense. The acting's fantastic. The acting's great. Like the horror is rock solid. I love the like, like the look, the the night scenes, and like the tr- the tracking shots. Like they do that thing. I mean, I get why people compare this to The Shining. Because it has, like, a similar look. Yeah. Where you have that, like, really smooth, like, camera just following the action all the time. It kind of looks, like, meticulously made. Oh, yeah. Like, the the cameraman really cared about his work. And I... And the director did a really good job. The acting is really good. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know. Like, there's nothing really to, like... I, I, there. I, have I can't no... pick it apart. Cause, no, like, I love this movie. There's nothing to pick apart. It's just a good movie. I love this movie. If you like, want a, just a fun 90-minute, like, <laughs> really good horror movie, like, pl- you owe it to yourself to go watch Next of Kin. You have to watch this. And it, look, it is available on purchase. It's on YouTube. You can also purchase it. You can purchase I lo- it. I, lo- I looked it up. You can purchase it. It says 2019 for some reason. Maybe that's when the rip was. I'm assuming that's when they remastered it. Yeah. So because um, I know for a long time this was not. You couldn't even get a hold of this movie so in I'm the U.S. You can get it on uh, Prime. I'm looking on Vudu though. Is it an and, HD? Uh, it's you can buy it on HD for 14.99. Okay. Which I think is a steal actually. Honestly, yeah, like you could do a lot, a hell of a lot worse. Yeah, like the f- this is one of those things where, like, I just know because like. I, no one talks about this fucking movie. No, no one ever talks about this goddamn movie. Like, I don't get why no nobody talks about this movie because it should be talked about. This deserves like a following. Like people talk about the most boring vanilla shit ever, and no one talks about this movie. Like I'm legit gonna go see, well, like what, like the director and see if he directed anything else because I like his work that much. Yeah, like I, it I, just it well, holy shit, well done. <laughs> I mean, she did pretty. I think you already know. Is it even a question? It's ten, a ten. ten. It's a ten out of ten. I can't. I, uh, I thing, literally like, have nothing bad to say about the thing. movie. Here's the thing. Like, yes, it is technically a B movie, but it's one of those B movies that I don't really understand why it's a B movie. Well, I don't get. I, I get that it's foreign, and maybe that's to its discredit. It's foreign. It's a slow burn. Because it probably didn't get as much release here as it should have. Well, it it didn't. Technically, this movie didn't even get released here until, like, a few years ago. Like, officially, you could not watch this movie in the U.S. Yeah. Which is probably why it says 2019. Which makes me, which almost just makes you wonder, like, how many other. That, (laughs) I try not to think about that. Because, like, I. Because it's like, it's Australia. That would keep me up at night. It's in English. Thinking about how many, like, really solid horror movies that we just don't get to see because they just keep them in the country. Yeah, like, because here's the thing, like, it's it's Australian, so it's like, it's in English. You don't need to translate it. Yeah. It's wild. Well, it's like Long Weekend. It, yeah. If you haven't seen Long Weekend, uh, please, you want to see some crazy Australian go shit? see Long Weekend. Like, rent it or buy it, whatever. Yeah. Go watch Long Weekend. It's another crazy Australian that went like, hidden for years. Yeah, decades. Like no one even knows about it, but it's there, and it's like because it's 
it's funny because it's like to me like i when you say foreign films i think of like you know like kurosawa but technically but I mean, australian is. is foreign i mean it's not like you don't think of australia as foreign but like to us it's not yeah readily available it's not really available and it's it's got its quirks and i fucking love it so like you know now we got solid like japanese horror is fucking awesome korean horror is yeah in- insane <laughs> and australian horror is just becoming like <laughs> one of my new favorite things it's great they knew just know how to do it right and it's great because each time it's like there's all it's something different yes because different country the different things are scary interesting whatever french horror just doesn't give a fuck at all and you know it's an australian movie because it ends with them just a guy getting shotgunned in the fucking oh, head it's bleak as hell like just... there's not there's not like a happy ending it's bleak as hell it's funny because it's bleak but i'm not gonna lie it's bleak but like she gets out i had the when i saw this i had the biggest smile on my face at the ending the kid survives and the the woman survives. She blasts him in the face. It ends with a giant explosion. Like, I mean, what else do you need in the movie? You don't. That that's I, honestly the perfect way to end a movie for me. <laughs> Just blow shit up. <laughs> that's all you have to do. I mean, it's like res, the Resident Evil formula, right? If, if you've played the Resident Evil games, you know each one of them ends Bl- with you just blowing something with a up giant ex- with a giant explosion, whether it be a city, a mansion, <laughs> a fucking island. Like some something blows up at the end, and you're fine. And it's fine, and it's perfect. It's a it's the perfect way to end it because you're blowing something to smithereens. Well, it's like the catharsis. Yeah, you suffered through all this, and the characters suffered through all this. And the end, boom. It's explosive, which is what you want. <laughs> you just want no fucking trace of that evil entity or, like, person living at all. Uh, it's wonderful. It's great. So please, please go watch Mexican. Please do. Please watch it. Watch Long Weekend. Just get into some Australian horror. Get into some shit, and we will... Uh, we will be more um we'll try and be more we almost had to cancel tonight's uh because of a flood but we're we're here we can okay? talk we we will we'll get into it more on next month's live stream yep we will i'm not going to go into too much detail but just know there was a flood and we almost <laughs> we possibly could have lost equipment so we i'm glad we didn't <laughs> see if we had a studio if you guys would subscribe, if you had a studio, we wouldn't run into this problem. If if someone wanted to send us a million dollars. That'd be great. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. I'm gonna that need, would be, I would appreciate that. I need you could, to come in on Saturday. <laughs> and Sunday, too. And Sunday, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's all you got to say about Nexo Ken. It's just a Watch s- it. fucking rock-solid horror movie <laughs> and you need to see it if you're a horror fan you have to see this um and uh for they mostly come in at night this has been will this has been alex we will talk to you all later Bye bye uh bye bye now